In the oppressive silence of his office, Richard sat at his desk, his fingers interlaced, forming a bridge beneath his chin, as his eyes wandered around the room. The walls, once adorned with vibrant paintings of inaugurations and achievements, now seemed to suffocate, reflecting the darkness invading his thoughts. He stood up slowly, walking towards the window, where the sunlight gently streamed in, but was unable to warm the coldness in his chest. How did I get to this point? He murmured to himself, his voice choked with sadness. The restaurant he had built with so much effort, which was the realization of a dream that started as an idea on a napkin, was now on the brink of collapse. Every detail of the place had been handpicked, every recipe tested and retested to perfection. And now, all of it was about to disappear, like a flame about to be extinguished by the relentless wind of circumstances. He closed his eyes, trying to focus, but reality was unforgiving. The bills piled up, silent witnesses to the failure he could no longer ignore. And to think that I once believed this would last forever, he thought, feeling the weight of the world on his shoulders. A meeting with his employees was about to begin, and he knew it would be the hardest conversation of his life. How could he look them in the eye and tell them that everything was lost? Richard sighed deeply, trying to find strength where there was none left. I need to be strong, he told himself, though the strength in his voice sounded hollow, like a distant echo of who he used to be. With one last glance at the paintings on the wall, he straightened his posture, preparing to face what was to come. After all, even if the dream was unraveling, he was still the captain of the ship and would go down with dignity. That afternoon, the silence in the restaurant was almost palpable as Richard made his way to the small meeting room where his employees awaited him. He hesitated for a moment before entering, taking a breath, trying to maintain the composure he knew was crucial at that moment. As he opened the door, he was met by faces watching him expectantly, still unaware of the weight of the words he carried. Richard stopped before them, his hands trembling slightly as he held the agenda for the meeting he had prepared himself. His eyes scanned each familiar face, people who, over the years, had become like family to him. With a tight throat, he tried to begin, but the words failed to come out. The weight of responsibility was overwhelming and the room seemed to shrink as reality closed in. I... I need to be honest with all of you, he began, his voice choked, broken by silent pain. I know we've been facing difficulties, but the situation is much worse than I've let on. Due to the accumulated debts, unfortunately, we will have to close the restaurant in two weeks. A collective sigh echoed in the room, followed by murmurs of disbelief. Richard's eyes began to well up as he continued, knowing he couldn't avoid the inevitable. I promise that all your rights will be respected until the last day. I will do my best to ensure that no one is harmed, but I don't see a way out of this situation. The impact of the news hit everyone like a sledgehammer. Some employees lowered their heads, while others exchanged sad and confused looks, trying to process the gravity of what they had just heard. The sadness was palpable, almost suffocating, and Richard felt as if the world was collapsing around him, along with the dream he had so carefully nurtured. For a moment, no one moved, no one spoke. It was as if time itself had stopped, capturing that moment of shared pain. Richard, struggling against the urge to break down, raised his eyes one last time. I'm so sorry, truly. You all deserve so much more than this. The silence that followed was more eloquent than any words. After the meeting, as the employees began to slowly leave the room, Ellen remained in the back, observing Richard. She saw the weariness in his eyes, the sadness he tried to hide, but which manifested in every hesitant gesture. When everyone had finally left, she approached, closing the door softly behind her. Richard, she began, her voice gentle and full of concern. I know you're going through a difficult time, but I want you to know that I'm here for whatever you need. You don't have to face this alone. Richard lowered his head as if her words had hit him with unexpected force. He let out a deep sigh, the pain reflected in his expression. I, I appreciate it, Ellen, really but it's hard to explain all of this. Everything feels so wrong right now. Ellen stepped closer, trying to understand better what he was feeling. What happened, Richard? You can trust me. 
Maybe by talking about what really happened, we can find a solution together. He lifted his eyes, which shone with a mixture of regret and exhaustion. I trusted the wrong person, he said, his voice heavy with frustration. I thought I was doing the right thing, but it ended up destroying everything we built here. Who was this person? Ellen asked, trying to get more details, her tone gentle but persistent. Richard shook his head, averting his gaze. It's complicated, he replied, his voice almost a whisper. The memory of the mistake was still an open wound, one he wasn't ready to fully explore. Ellen watched Richard for a moment, sensing the barrier he had put up. She realized there was much more to the story, but she also knew he needed time to process it. It's okay, she finally said with a gentle touch on his arm. I'm here, okay? When you're ready to talk, I'll be here. Richard just nodded, grateful for the silent support, but still trapped in his own confusion and pain. As she left the room, he stood there for a moment, reflecting on her words, feeling a slight relief in knowing he wasn't completely alone in this fight, even if the shadow of the mistake continued to haunt him. In the days that followed, Richard became a constant presence in the restaurant, moving through the hallways with a silent determination. Each morning, he arrived before the first rays of sunlight, donning his apron with the same seriousness as when he first opened the restaurant. Even knowing that the end was near, he refused to simply watch everything crumble. Good morning, everyone, he would say as he crossed the kitchen, trying to keep his tone light. But the sadness in his eyes betrayed the effort. He offered to help with the simplest tasks, from chopping vegetables to cleaning tables. The manual labor, at least, allowed him to temporarily push away the dark thoughts that haunted him. The news of the impending closure had spread, and some of the employees, unable to face the uncertainty, began looking for new jobs. Each day, Richard noticed familiar faces missing from the restaurant's routine, replaced by a void that only deepened the sense of loss. Did you see that the cook left? One of the waitresses whispered to another as they prepared the tables. The response was a sad nod, reflecting the collective feeling of dismay. The atmosphere of the restaurant, once vibrant with the sound of laughter and the clinking of silverware, was now suffused with a melancholy that was hard to ignore. With each order served, with each dish washed, there was an unspoken air of farewell, as if everyone was slowly coming to terms with the inevitable end. Richard, though he tried to hide it, felt the weight of each loss. He saw in his employees' eyes the pain of anticipated goodbye, the fear of an uncertain future. It'll be okay, he would say, even though he himself wasn't sure of those words but the melancholy continued to permeate the atmosphere, making each task a reminder of what was to come. Despite this, he persisted, trying to maintain normalcy until the very last moment. Each dish he prepared, each smile he forced for the customers, was an effort to prolong the inevitable, as if somehow he could save a bit of the soul of the restaurant he so loved. On a cold night, after the last customer had left and the restaurant lights were turned off, Richard lingered for a few minutes at the door, watching the deserted street. The barely visible stars in the sky reflected the emptiness he felt in his chest. He decided then to walk home, hoping the cold air might clear his confused thoughts and ease the weight on his mind. The streets were quiet, wrapped in a silence that only the night brings. His boots echoed against the asphalt, each step seeming to drag the day's worries along. Richard shoved his hands into his pockets, trying to shield himself from the biting wind as his mind wandered through the problems he faced. Suddenly, a sound broke the tranquility around him. A faint cry, laden with despair, reached his ears. He stopped, his heart tightening as he recognized the lament of a child. The sound came from a dimly lit side street, and Richard, driven by an instinct he couldn't ignore, followed the direction. As he approached, the boy's words became clear. Mommy, I'm hungry. Please, I just want to eat. The fragile voice, mixed with the cold of the night, hit Richard with an unexpected force. When he turned the corner, he saw a woman kneeling on the ground, embracing a small boy who was sobbing in her arms. She murmured comforting words, her trembling voice betraying the effort to calm the child. It'll be okay, my love. We'll get something, I promise, she said, though the uncertainty in her tone showed how desperate she was. Richard stopped a few steps away, watching the scene. 
He didn't know what that woman had gone through, but he could feel her pain as tangibly as his own. At that moment, a surly-looking man approached the woman, and she, with renewed hope, quickly stood up and, in an almost pleading voice, asked for help. Please, sir, my son is hungry. Anything you can offer would be a great help, she begged, extending her hand, as if the only thing she could do was to ask for an act of kindness. But instead of compassion, the man gave her a cold and disdainful look. Get a job and stop begging around here, he snapped, his tone filled with contempt. The words cut the woman like a sharp blade and she stepped back, holding her breath to contain the sob that threatened to burst. Her eyes welled up, but she didn't let the tears fall, forcing a trembling smile as she knelt again beside her son. It'll be okay, dear, she murmured, caressing the boy's face, though the uncertainty in her voice revealed otherwise. The pain and embarrassment choked every word, but she refused to let her son see how hurt she was. The scene of despair before Richard, with the mother trying in vain to hide her pain so as not to frighten her child, hit him like a blow to the chest. The man's insult still echoed in his ears, and the way the woman held back her tears, trying to maintain her dignity, left him deeply moved. He couldn't just turn his back and continue on his way. With a racing heart and growing determination, Richard made an impulsive but sure decision. He quickly turned around and began running back to the restaurant, his legs moving almost instinctively. Each step was driven by the desire to do something tangible, something that could at least for one night alleviate the suffering of that small family. Upon arriving at the restaurant, he wasted no time. He entered through the back door and headed straight to the kitchen, where the aroma of the ingredients still lingered in the air. With agile hands, Richard gathered the best ingredients he had at his disposal. As he prepared the meal, he focused on each movement, putting his heart into every detail, as if the food he was preparing was more than just sustenance. It was a symbol of hope. These people need this more than anything, he murmured to himself as he carefully arranged the plate. Once the meal was ready, Richard wrapped the plate in a clean cloth to keep it warm and left again through the back door. The cold night enveloped him as soon as he stepped onto the sidewalk, but the warmth emanating from the food seemed to reflect the warmth he felt in his own heart. With quick and determined steps, he returned to the street where he had seen the mother and child. With each step, Richard's determination grew. He was about to do something important, something that transcended the simple act of feeding. The plate in his hands was his way of offering not only food, but also a bit of comfort and dignity to that woman and her son who so desperately needed it. When he arrived at the street where he had seen the mother and boy, Richard found them in the exact same place, the woman still kneeling beside her son, trying to comfort him with gentle words. As he approached, he paused for a moment, observing the scene, feeling the weight of the responsibility in his hands. With a racing heart, he took a few more steps and, with a gentle smile, extended the carefully prepared plate. Here it is, he said, his voice soft and full of compassion. It's for you. The woman looked up, surprised, and for a moment she couldn't speak. Her eyes filled with tears, but this time they weren't from pain or despair, but from gratitude. I don't know how to thank you, she murmured, her hands trembling as she took the plate. She looked at her son, who was now also looking at Richard, his large, bright eyes filled with innocent hope. Thank you, sir the boy said, his voice still trembling, but now filled with a new emotion. He looked at the food as if it were a precious gift, something he hadn't seen in a long time. Richard knelt beside them, looking into the boy's eyes and smiling tenderly. You don't need to thank me. I just want you to eat well and stay strong. That's the most important thing. The woman held the plate tightly, as if she were holding her own salvation and took a deep breath to hold back the tears that still threatened to fall. God bless you for this. You don't know how much this means to us. As Richard watched the woman and boy begin to eat, he felt a strange relief wash over him. The weight of the imminent closure of his restaurant was still there, but for a brief moment, it seemed a little lighter. Richard couldn't change the world, but in that instant, he had made a difference in the lives of those two people. The boy's shy smile and the mother's gratitude were all he needed to feel that, somehow, he was on the right path. 
even if the future was uncertain. After that, at the restaurant, the days passed by, and at the end of that work week, despite the extra effort and promotions, things still seemed shrouded in an inevitable shadow. Richard moved through the hallways with heavy steps, his heart tight with what he knew was coming. Each meal served, each smile exchanged with a customer, carried with it a deep melancholy, for he knew that time was running out. In the quiet of the office, far from the bustle of the kitchen and tables, Richard sat at his desk, looking at the papers that had already become a familiar sight. Contracts, bills, notifications. But now, among them, there was something he avoided looking at directly, the purchase offer for the restaurant. He picked up the document with trembling hands, feeling the weight of the words printed on those pages. The businessman who wanted to buy the restaurant had clear plans, to demolish the place to build a new development, something modern and impersonal, that would not retain a single trace of the dream Richard had created and nurtured for so many years. Is this the end of my dream? Richard whispered to himself, his voice heavy with sadness. The sale seemed to be the only option left, a harsh reality he had tried to avoid accepting. The restaurant, which had been his pride, his life, was about to be transformed into something he could barely recognize. He closed his eyes for a moment, trying to push away the growing pain in his chest. After all this, this is what's left, he thought bitterly, feeling a solitary tear slide down his face. The sadness that enveloped him was overwhelming, and the future, which once seemed uncertain, was now almost decided, a future without the restaurant he so dearly loved. With a deep sigh, Richard placed the document back on the table and looked around his office, trying to memorize every detail, knowing that within a week, all of this could be just a distant memory, erased by a new development that would carry none of the memories he had built. Later that day, after hours of work that only increased the weight on his heart, Richard felt an urgent need to step outside and breathe some fresh air. The walls of the restaurant, which once provided him comfort, now seemed to close in on him, reflecting the growing pressure that accompanied him at every moment. Determined to clear his mind, he left the restaurant and began walking through the streets, the night's cold seeping into his skin, but unable to freeze the thoughts swirling in his head. As his steps led him through familiar streets, his thoughts returned to the mother and child he had encountered days before. The image of the woman, desperate but maintaining her dignity, and the boy, hungry yet still full of hope, stayed with him. He wondered if they were okay, if they had found some temporary comfort. These questions circled in his mind when, turning a corner, he spotted the same figures in the dim light. The mother and child were sitting in the same place, but now something about them seemed even more fragile. The clothes they wore were even dirtier and more worn, and the boy, once restless with hunger, now appeared exhausted, leaning against his mother's shoulder. Richard felt a pang in his chest, seeing how much their situation had worsened in such a short time. Without hesitation, he approached them, his heart heavy but determined to do something more. You too, he called softly, trying not to startle them. The woman looked up, recognizing him immediately. The surprise on her face quickly turned into an expression of hope mixed with caution. You came back, the mother murmured, almost in disbelief. The boy also recognized him, his large eyes fixing on Richard with a mixture of relief and desperation. Richard knelt beside them, feeling the urgency of the situation. I want to help, but this time in a way that makes a difference. Come with me to the restaurant. I can offer you shelter, a warm place to stay. The mother looked at him, her eyes shining with tears she struggled to hold back. Sir, we don't want to take advantage of your kindness. You've already done so much for us, she said, her voice trembling. Richard shook his head, determined. Don't worry about that. I insist. You need a safe place, and I need to do something that really counts. The woman, with no other options and her son by her side, looked at Richard with deep gratitude. Then we accept. But please know, we'll do our best not to be a burden. Richard smiled, feeling a weight lift from his chest. You're not a burden. Let's go to the restaurant, and together we'll find a way to get through this. With that, he helped them to their feet, guiding them through the dark streets toward the restaurant, determined to make a difference in the lives of this family, even as his own life seemed to be falling apart. 
When they arrived at the restaurant, Richard carefully pushed open the front door as if he were bringing in a precious secret. The soft glow of the lamps over the tables illuminated the empty space, creating a welcoming atmosphere that contrasted with the cold of the night outside. He turned to the mother and child, who followed him with hesitant steps, and offered a reassuring smile. You're safe now, Richard said, his voice firm but gentle. I'll make sure you have a warm meal and a place to rest. Seeing him with the woman and the boy, Ellen, who was near the counter, raised an eyebrow, curious, but immediately understood the gravity of the situation when she saw the expression on Richard's face. Ellen, he called, not wasting any time. We need to prepare a meal for them, something warm and nourishing as quickly as possible. His voice left no room for doubt. There was urgency in his words, but also a compassion that did not go unnoticed. Ellen nodded without hesitation. Leave it to me, she replied, already moving toward the kitchen, where the other employees also began to prepare, sensing the importance of the moment. As Ellen and the team worked efficiently, Richard approached her again, speaking in a lower tone. Besides that, we need to set up a place for them to spend the night, something comfortable, where they can rest and recover. Ellen paused for a moment, thinking quickly. We can use that space in the back, she suggested, pointing to the little-used storage area. It's not much, but we can improvise something decent. That's perfect, Richard agreed, relieved to see that Ellen was as willing to help as he was. Let's do the best we can. With the decision made, Ellen spoke to the remaining staff, who were eager to help. Together, they began moving boxes and organizing the backspace, transforming it into a small makeshift room. They brought clean blankets, some pillows, and set up a simple but comfortable bed. The environment, though modest, began to feel welcoming, a temporary sanctuary for those who so desperately needed it. While the room was being prepared, the meal was also nearly ready. The aroma of hot food began to fill the restaurant, bringing immediate comfort. Richard watched everything with a mix of relief and satisfaction, knowing that the mother and child would have a safe place and food in their stomachs. Finally, when everything was ready, Ellen approached Richard and said with a soft smile, They can rest now. Richard nodded, feeling a small victory amidst the chaos surrounding him. He then turned his attention to the mother and child, who watched everything with tired but grateful eyes. Come, he said, gently guiding them. We've prepared a place for you where you can rest and regain your strength. The woman looked at Richard, her eyes shining with an emotion she couldn't fully express in words. I don't know how to thank you. This means the world to us. Don't worry about it, Richard replied with a sincere smile. You deserve a bit of peace. Rest well. Tomorrow will be a new day. With that, he led them to the improvised room, where the mother and child could finally feel the warmth of the kindness they had been offered, a rare relief amidst the hardships they faced. After some time, when the mother and child were finally able to rest, Richard felt a lightness in his chest, knowing that, at least for one night, they would be safe from the cold and hunger. Ellen, ever attentive, had provided clean clothes for them, and the family, now bathed and in fresh clothes, looked a little more rejuvenated, despite the evident exhaustion on their faces. Richard waited patiently as they settled into the small, improvised room. When he felt the moment was right, he approached with a gentle smile, knocking lightly on the door before entering. How are you feeling? he asked, his tone soft but laden with genuine concern. The mother, now visibly more at ease, looked at Richard with a warm gaze. We're much better thanks to you, she said, the gratitude evident in every word. My name is Rose and this is my son, Lincoln. I don't know how we can thank you for everything you've done for us. Lincoln, who was sitting beside his mother, smiled shyly at Richard, clearly relieved to finally be in a safe place. Richard returned the smile, feeling a growing connection with the two of them. Rose, Lincoln, he began, leaning in slightly so that his voice sounded closer and more comforting. My name is Richard, and you don't need to thank me. I'm happy to help, but I need to be honest with you. Rose frowned slightly, sensing the more serious tone in Richard's words. What do you mean? She asked with a hint of concern. Richard sighed, feeling the weight of the truth he needed to share. The restaurant? 
Well, it's going through serious difficulties. We're actually a week away from closing the doors for good. I wish I could offer more than just a few days of shelter, but I'm afraid our help is temporary. Rose's eyes filled with silent understanding and she nodded slowly. I understand. It's painful to hear that. Especially after everything you've done for us. But know that these few days you've offered us mean the world to me and Lincoln. We have nowhere else to go. But your generosity has given us time. And that's something we'll never forget. Lincoln, who had been silent until then, looked at Richard with wide eyes full of admiration. Thank you, sir. I know what you're doing is difficult, but it's already more than many would do. Richard, touched by the boy's words, felt a lump in his throat. I'll do everything I can to make these days peaceful and comfortable for you, he promised, knowing that despite the uncertainty surrounding the future of the restaurant, he still had the chance to make a difference in the lives of Rose and Lincoln, even if only for a short time. From that day on, Rose, driven by deep gratitude, decided that she couldn't simply accept Richard's help without giving something back. Early in the morning, she got up before sunrise, determined to find a way to contribute. Dressed in the clean clothes Ellen had provided, she headed to the kitchen, where she found Richard preparing breakfast. Good morning, Richard, Rose said with a shy but determined smile. I want to help. I can't stay here doing nothing while you and your team work so hard. Richard looked up from what he was doing, surprised by her determination. Rose, you don't need to worry about that. You're our guests. Rose shook her head firmly. I insist. It wouldn't be fair to just receive without giving something in return. I want to contribute however I can. I know I can't do much, but I can help with cleaning, organizing tables, serving customers, anything to lighten your workload a little. Lincoln, always by his mother's side, nodded in agreement. I can help too. I don't want to sit around while everyone else works, he said, with the same determination in his eyes. Richard smiled touched by their willingness. All right, he said after a moment of consideration. If it makes you feel better, we'd be happy to have your help. But please don't overexert yourselves. You still need to rest and recover. With Richard's consent, Rose and Lincoln began to get involved in the daily tasks of the restaurant. Rose, with a keen eye, dedicated herself to keeping the place spotless, cleaning tables, and organizing utensils with almost maternal care. When the restaurant got busier, she offered to serve customers, moving with a simple yet effective grace that impressed both the staff and patrons. Thank you for coming, she would say with a genuine smile to each customer she served, conveying the same kindness she had received from Richard. Her effort did not go unnoticed. Ellen, who was watching closely, commented to Richard, She's a real blessing, Richard. Not only does she help, but she also brings a positive energy to the place. Lincoln, for his part, made sure to help with everything he could. Although still young, his dedication was remarkable. He cleaned tables, organized cutlery, and occasionally helped in the kitchen with small tasks, always with a smile on his face. Rose's appreciation for Richard and his team was evident in every gesture. To her, every clean dish, every organized table, was a way of repaying the generosity they had shown her and her son. The restaurant, which had once been just a temporary shelter, began to transform into something more. A place where she could feel part of something bigger, where her and Lincoln's presence was valued. Despite the temporary relief he felt from having helped Rose and Lincoln, Richard couldn't shake the shadow hanging over him. The news of the restaurant's impending closure was becoming an increasingly difficult burden to bear. As he watched Rose and Lincoln work with dedication and gratitude, the brutal reality hit him even harder. Soon, they would no longer have that refuge. The thought of seeing them back on the streets without a roof, without safety, was unbearable for Richard. The accumulated stress began to take its toll. Richard tried to maintain a strong facade, but inside, the pressure was eating away at him. Every task in the restaurant, which once brought a sense of purpose, was now a constant reminder of what he was about to lose not just the restaurant, but also the chance to continue helping these people who had suddenly become so important in his life. That morning, the wait finally became too much. Richard was in the kitchen, trying to focus on a simple task, but his vision began to blur, and his head started to spin. 
He felt a wave of weakness wash over his body, his hands trembling as he leaned on the counter. I need to sit, he murmured to himself. But before he could take another step, everything around him went dark. Ellen, who was nearby, saw the exact moment Richard collapsed to the floor. Panic hit her, but her instinct was immediate. Richard! She shouted, running to him. The staff stopped what they were doing, fear written on their faces. Ellen, with the help of one of the employees, managed to lift Richard, whose face was pale and colorless. We need to get him to the hospital now, she said, her voice firm but trembling with concern. At the hospital, the doctor carefully examined Richard, noting the extreme exhaustion he had reached. After the tests, the diagnosis was clear, extreme stress and fatigue. He needs to rest, the doctor said, addressing Ellen seriously. His body is giving clear signs that it can't continue at this pace. A day of absolute rest, without worries, is the minimum he needs. Ellen nodded, the concern still evident in her eyes. Of course, doctor, I'll make sure he rests, she replied, determined to take care of Richard as he had always taken care of everyone around him. Richard, regaining consciousness, tried to protest. I need to get back. The restaurant, he mumbled, attempting to get up from the bed. But Ellen was firm, holding his shoulder to prevent him from moving. You need to rest, Richard. The restaurant will be fine for a day. Let me and the team take care of everything. Now it's your turn to accept help. Reluctantly, but with no strength to argue, Richard settled back into the bed, feeling the weight of the world on him, but also the lightness of knowing that, at least for one day, he wouldn't have to carry this burden alone. As Ellen left the room to organize everything at the restaurant, he closed his eyes, allowing himself, for the first time in a long time, to succumb to the exhaustion that had overtaken him. That day, with Richard resting in the hospital, Ellen felt the weight of responsibility fall on her shoulders, but also an unshakable determination to keep the restaurant running in his absence. Arriving at the restaurant in the morning, she gathered the team, who were already aware of what had happened to Richard, and spoke with a firmness that surprised everyone. Today, we're going to keep things running as if Richard were here, she said, looking into the eyes of each one. He trusted us to continue, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We all know how much this place means to him, and now it's our turn to repay all the effort he's always put into this restaurant. The employees, who already had great respect for Ellen, nodded in unison, feeling the seriousness of the moment. Rose, who was among them, stepped forward and offered to help more than ever. Lincoln and I will do everything we can, Ellen. We won't let Richard down. Ellen smiled, touched by Rose's willingness. I appreciate it very much, Rose. I know Richard would too. Let's work together to make sure today is a smooth day. After the restaurant closed that day, Ellen felt a mix of exhaustion and relief. The day had been intense, but she was satisfied with the outcome. With the restaurant's lights off and doors locked, she grabbed her car keys and headed to the hospital to pick up Richard. When she arrived at his room, she found Richard sitting on the bed, already dressed and ready to leave. Ready to go back? She asked, keeping her tone light but with a look that conveyed the concern she still felt. Richard nodded, standing up carefully. More than ready, he replied, trying to appear stronger than he felt. And thank you, Ellen, for everything. On the way home, they were enveloped in comfortable silence, only interrupted by the soft hum of the car's engine. Ellen, sensing that Richard was more at ease, decided it was time to try and understand what had really happened. Richard, she began, keeping her eyes on the road. I know you're going through a tough time, but I've always wanted to know what really led the restaurant to this situation. I think that if you can share it with me, maybe we can figure something out together. Richard remained silent for a moment, staring out the window as the city lights flashed by. Ellen deserved the truth, but talking about what had happened was still painful. Finally, he took a deep breath, gathering the courage to confess. It was a man named David, he began, his voice heavy with regret. He was someone I trusted, a longtime friend. When the restaurant started having difficulties, he showed up with an investment proposal that seemed like the solution to all our problems. Ellen kept her eyes on the road but listened intently, feeling the weight of Richard's words. I believed him, Richard continued, his voice faltering a bit. 
He promised to invest a significant amount, said he would help us get out of the hole. But instead, he took all the money I could gather, everything I could, and disappeared. I never heard from him again. Richard, Ellen murmured, feeling a mix of anger and compassion. I can't believe someone would do that to you. Richard gave a sad smile, still staring at the nighttime scenery outside the window. I feel like a fool for trusting him, he admitted, the shame evident in his voice. That's why I didn't want to talk about it before. I'm embarrassed for falling for such a cruel scam. I thought I could fix everything on my own, but, well, here we are. Ellen finally took her eyes off the road for a brief moment to look at Richard, her face gentle but firm. You have nothing to be ashamed of, Richard. This could have happened to anyone. What matters now is that you're not alone. We'll face this together. Richard turned to Ellen, feeling a pang of relief mixed with sadness. Thank you, Ellen, he said softly. I think of all the things I've lost. Trust has been the hardest to recover. Ellen gently gripped the steering wheel, determined. And we'll work to regain it, Richard. One step at a time. The restaurant still has life, and as long as we're in this together, there's hope. As they continued the drive in silence, the weight Richard carried seemed a little lighter, not because the problem had disappeared, but because now he knew he wouldn't have to face it alone. As the car approached Richard's house, the silence between him and Ellen was filled with a new mutual understanding. Ellen, sensing the weight of the sadness that still hung over Richard, decided to break the silence with words that might at least ease the burden he carried. Richard, she began with a softness in her voice, no matter what happened in the past, what matters is that we're here now, together, ready to face whatever comes. Richard turned to her, his eyes still clouded with sadness, but with a lightness he hadn't felt in days. I know, Ellen. You've been a true friend, more than I could ask for. I don't know how to thank you for being by my side during this time. Ellen smiled, a smile that reflected the determination and hope she felt. You don't need to thank me, Richard. We're in this together. When the car stopped in front of Richard's house, he sighed deeply, looking at the familiar facade but feeling that something inside him had changed. The sadness was still there, but there was a small thread of hope that Ellen had planted in his heart. Before he could open the door and get out of the car, Ellen interrupted him, placing her hand gently on his arm. Richard, wait a moment she said, her tone mysterious but full of confidence. Richard frowned, confused. What is it, Ellen? She looked directly into his eyes, a spark of determination in her gaze. Something tells me that things are about to change, she declared with a certainty that made Richard's heart beat a little faster. What do you mean? He asked, even more confused, trying to understand what Ellen was hinting at. Ellen just smiled, that smile he had learned to trust, and winked at him with a playful look. You'll see tomorrow, she replied, her voice full of an implicit promise. Richard opened his mouth to ask more, but realized that Ellen wouldn't say anything else. He smiled back, intrigued, but also somewhat relieved to see that, despite everything, Ellen had something in mind that could make a difference. All right, he said finally, accepting the mystery. I'll wait until tomorrow then. With that, Richard got out of the car, feeling a little less burdened while Ellen watched him walk to the door. When he finally entered, Ellen started the car, a confident smile still on her lips, knowing that the next day would bring something that could change the course of this story in ways Richard couldn't even imagine. The next morning, Richard woke up with a mix of anxiety and curiosity. Ellen's enigmatic words the night before echoed in his mind, and he couldn't shake the feeling that something was about to happen. After getting dressed, he left the house and walked toward the restaurant, trying to imagine what Ellen might have planned. When he finally approached and saw the restaurant in the distance, Richard stopped abruptly. His eyes widened in disbelief as he saw a huge line of people forming outside. Men, women, entire families were waiting patiently, all with expressions of anticipation. For a moment, he thought he was dreaming. The sight seemed surreal, like a return to the restaurant's glory days. Is this really happening? Richard murmured to himself as his heart raced. With quick steps, he headed to the entrance, still unable to process what he was seeing. As he approached, 
The faces in the line began to turn towards him, some waving with friendly smiles, others exchanging comments about what they were expecting to experience. Wasting no more time, Richard opened the door and entered the restaurant. As he crossed the threshold, the vibrant sound of animated conversations and the clinking of cutlery hit his ears. The dining area was full, every table occupied by customers who were laughing, talking, and savoring the dishes. It was as if the restaurant had been reborn in a single day. But what happened here? Richard whispered, still in disbelief. He walked between the tables, feeling a mix of relief and amazement, trying to comprehend how everything had changed overnight. Finally, he spotted Ellen near the counter, coordinating the team with a satisfied smile. She noticed Richard's presence and, seeing the expression of surprise on his face, couldn't help but smile even wider. Good morning, Richard, Ellen said, approaching him with a sparkle in her eyes. Did you like the surprise? Richard was still taking everything in, but managed to respond, his voice full of admiration. Ellen, what did you do? How did you pull all of this off? Ellen let out a light laugh, full of satisfaction. It was a team effort, Richard, but the credit is all yours. The people here are drawn to something special that only your restaurant can offer. Richard looked around again, seeing the restaurant he thought was lost, now full of life and energy. This is incredible. I don't even know what to say, he admitted, feeling a lump in his throat, this time from pure emotion. Richard then followed Ellen toward the kitchen, where the intensity of the aromas and the heat from the pots on the stove filled the air with a vibrant energy. Ellen opened the kitchen door with a satisfied smile and gestured for Richard to enter. As he crossed the threshold, his gaze was immediately drawn to a familiar figure moving skillfully among the pots and ingredients. Rose? Richard exclaimed, surprised to see her there, commanding the kitchen with natural skill. She was focused, preparing dishes with a precision that only someone with a true passion for cooking could possess. Rose looked up at the sound of her name and smiled, her eyes shining with satisfaction. Good morning, Richard. I hope you don't mind that I took over the kitchen for a while. I wanted to give back a little of what you've done for me and Lincoln, she said as she stirred a pot. Richard stood still for a moment, taking in the scene before him. He finally understood what was happening. It was you. The food you're preparing. Is that what drew so many people? Ellen, standing beside him, nodded with a proud smile. Exactly, Richard. While you were in the hospital, Rose offered to cook, and the dishes she prepared became an instant hit. Knowing this, I came up with the idea to use social media to promote a special offer. We made posts offering a discount to anyone who showed the post when they arrived here. The response was incredible. Within hours, people started showing up. Richard looked at Ellen in disbelief. And all this happened in just one day? Ellen laughed softly. Sometimes all we need is a spark to reignite the flame. Rose brought that spark with her food, and word of mouth did the rest. People were craving something special, and we offered exactly what they wanted. Rose, listening to the conversation, added humbly, I just did what I knew how to do. I wanted to help in the best way I could. I never imagined my food could have such an impact. Richard, still in awe, approached Rose, feeling a wave of gratitude. You did much more than just help, Rose. You brought life back to this place. I don't even know how to thank you. Rose shook her head, smiling shyly. Thank me? You've done so much for me and my son. This is my way of giving back. And seeing the restaurant full of happy people is the greatest thanks I could receive. Richard, still absorbing the magnitude of what was happening, turned to Ellen, admiration written on his face. Ellen, this strategy was brilliant. You turned what seemed like the end into a new beginning, he said, his voice filled with sincere gratitude. I don't even know how to express how much this means to me. Ellen, always modest, shrugged with a smile. I just did what I thought was right, Richard. But the real magic happened here in the kitchen, thanks to Rose's talent. Richard, feeling a growing curiosity, turned his gaze to Rose, who was finishing a dish with the same dedication she had shown from the start. Rose, he began approaching her, how did you become such a skilled cook? You have a special gift. Rose, surprised by the question, paused for a moment and smiled nostalgically her eyes reflecting distant memories. 
I learned to cook from my mother, she explained, her voice soft but full of emotion. She was an incredible woman, very skilled in the kitchen. Since I was little, I would watch her prepare meals for our family, and that's how I started learning. She taught me everything she knew, from the simplest techniques to the secrets that made each dish unique. Cooking became our way of connecting, and every recipe I make carries a bit of her in it. Intrigued, Richard looked at Rose with a mixture of admiration and curiosity. Rose, he asked, leaning slightly toward her, why didn't you ever mention that you had this incredible talent in the kitchen? You could have told us earlier. Rose lowered her gaze for a moment, a slight blush spreading across her cheeks. You know, Richard, she began, her voice soft and somewhat hesitant. It had been a long time since I had cooked anything. After my mother passed away, I just lost confidence in my cooking skills. Cooking was always something we did together, and when she was gone, it felt like the flavor of the food I prepared was gone too. She paused her eyes reflecting the pain and longing she still carried. Since then, I never had the courage to cook like before. I felt insecure, thinking that what I made would never live up to what she did. Richard nodded, deeply understanding what she was saying. But something changed, didn't it? What happened that made you decide to cook again? Rose looked up, a shy smile forming on her lips. It was the day you went to the hospital, one of the cooks couldn't come to work, and Ellen was trying to manage the situation as the crowd grew. I saw she needed help, and something inside me said it was time to try again. I spoke with Ellen, and she gave me a chance in the kitchen. Ellen, standing beside Richard, smiled as she remembered that moment. I knew there was something special about Rose from the start, Ellen commented. When I saw the dishes she was preparing, I was impressed. They weren't just well-made, they had soul, something you don't find everywhere. Rose, a bit emotional, continued. After the customers started praising the food, Ellen had the idea to spread the word on Instagram and Facebook, offering a promotion. Suddenly, people started showing up, curious to try something new. And here we are. Richard looked at Rose, feeling deep gratitude for her courage in returning to something she loved so much, despite all the uncertainties she carried. You brought back something you thought you had lost, Rose, he said, his voice filled with emotion. And it wasn't just your confidence that returned. You brought life back to this place. Rose smiled, her eyes shining with a mix of pride and humility. I just did what needed to be done, Richard. And in the process, I ended up finding something I thought I had lost forever. Richard looked at Ellen and then at Rose, feeling that despite all the challenges they had faced, they were creating something new, something that could truly last. You two are amazing, he said sincerely. With people like you by my side, I know we can face anything. During that week, as the restaurant continued to rise under Rose's talent and Ellen's leadership, Richard received an unexpected phone call. He was in the office reviewing the day's numbers when his phone rang. Seeing his lawyer's name on the screen, a pang of worry crossed his mind. He quickly answered and heard the serious voice of the lawyer on the other end. Richard, I have important news, the lawyer began, without preamble. David has been found by the police in a nearby town. They've arrested him, and we've already started the process against him. Richard was silent for a few seconds, processing what he had just heard. Are you saying they found David? He asked, his voice mixing surprise with cautious relief. Is he really in custody? Yes, the lawyer confirmed. He tried to keep a low profile, but he was eventually located thanks to an anonymous tip. The police acted quickly, and now he's detained. I'm already handling all the legal processes to ensure you get back some of the money you lost. Richard felt a whirlwind of emotions. Anger at what David had done, relief that he had finally been found, and a faint hope that maybe things could be resolved. This is good news indeed, Richard replied still trying to control the mix of feelings. But what does this mean for the restaurant? Will we be able to recover everything? The lawyer paused briefly, his voice taking on a more cautious tone. Unfortunately, Richard, the amount we've been able to recover is only a fraction of what you lost. It won't be enough to cover all the restaurant's debts, but it's a start. We'll need to keep working hard to fill that financial gap. Richard took a deep breath, feeling the weight of reality on his shoulders. I understand, 
he said with renewed determination in his voice. That means the work is far from over, but at least we have a chance. It's more than we had before. Exactly, the lawyer agreed. I'll continue to monitor the case to ensure you get as much as possible. In the meantime, keep focusing on what you're building at the restaurant. It sounds like you're on the right track. After hanging up the phone, Richard sat in silence for a moment, reflecting on the unexpected turn of events. David had been found, but the road ahead was still uncertain. The partial restitution of the money was a victory, but the real challenge was yet to come. There were significant debts to be paid off and a lot of work to be done to keep the restaurant afloat. From that day on, a new energy took hold of the restaurant. Richard, renewed by the determination to overcome the challenges he still faced, dove headfirst into the work. Each day was a battle, but he was no longer fighting alone. Alongside Ellen and Rose, he dedicated himself to transforming the restaurant into something even more special. Rose, with her passion for cooking, continued to captivate customers with dishes that seemed to carry the love and dedication she put into every recipe. Every meal that left the kitchen was a masterpiece, and customers soon noticed that there was something unique about the food. These dishes have soul, said some regular patrons, who now brought friends and family to share the experience. While Rose dominated the kitchen, Ellen took charge of the marketing with a strategic vision that even surprised Richard. We need to maintain a strong social media presence, she said, as she created enticing posts that highlighted the day's specials, always with mouthwatering photos. Ellen also organized themed events and special nights, which quickly became the talk of the town. Let's create a tasting event, she suggested one morning, where people can sample small portions of our most popular dishes. That will attract even more customers. Richard, for his part, focused on ensuring that the service was impeccable. He carefully reviewed the numbers, optimizing costs and finding ways to maximize profits without compromising quality. Every detail matters, he repeated to the team, who now felt more motivated than ever. With everyone working in harmony, the restaurant began to flourish in a way Richard never imagined possible after the setbacks they had faced. The tables were always full, and weekend reservations had to be made weeks in advance. Word of mouth spread quickly, and soon the small town was buzzing about the restaurant's revival, a place everyone had thought was on the brink of closing. Richard saw the results reflected in the finances. With each passing week, the debts that once seemed insurmountable began to decrease. He tracked every penny that came in, smiling with satisfaction as he saw that they were finally on the right path. We're making it, he said one evening, reviewing the numbers with Ellen and Rose by his side. There's still a lot of work ahead, but we're on the right track. Rose, with a shy smile, responded, I knew we could do it. This restaurant is more than just a place to eat. It's a place where people come to feel good, to share special moments. And that's something that should never disappear. Ellen, ever practical, added, this is the result of hard work and dedication, ours and the whole team's. We'll keep fighting every day to ensure the restaurant stays strong. Over time, their collective effort began to bear even more significant fruit. The debts that had once threatened the restaurant were being paid off one by one, and Richard finally saw the light at the end of the tunnel. When the last payment was made, he allowed himself a moment of relief, feeling the weight of the world lifted from his shoulders. That night, as he closed the restaurant, Richard looked around, seeing the place now filled with life and hope. We did it, he whispered to himself, a smile of gratitude on his lips. Feeling that the restaurant had finally overcome the worst moments and that the future was full of possibilities, Richard began to reflect on the people who had been instrumental in this turnaround. Among them, Ellen stood out in a special way. Her strategic vision tireless dedication and emotional support had saved the restaurant and brought new energy to the business. One evening, after a long day of work, Richard called Ellen for a private conversation. They were in the office, the place where so many difficult decisions had been made, but at that moment, the atmosphere seemed charged with positive anticipation. Richard observed her for a moment, feeling a deep respect and admiration for everything she represented. Ellen, he began, his voice full of sincerity. I don't have the words to express how grateful I am for everything you've done. 
This restaurant wouldn't be where it is today without your effort and vision. And I feel it's time to acknowledge that in a way that goes beyond words. Ellen, a little surprised, furrowed her brow slightly, trying to understand where Richard was going with this. Richard, you know I'll always be here to help no matter what. But what are you suggesting? Richard smiled, a smile that conveyed both gratitude and the seriousness of the decision he was about to make. I want you to become my partner, Ellen. This restaurant is as much yours as it is mine now. You deserve to have a real stake, not just in the effort but also in the rewards we're reaping. Ellen was momentarily speechless, surprise evident on her face. Richard, this is... It's an enormous honor. I never expected this. I just wanted to help in the best way I could. I know, Richard replied, leaning slightly toward her, his eyes reflecting the depth of his feelings. But you did more than help. You transformed this place, and I trust you completely to take the restaurant to new heights. Together, we can do so much more. After a moment of silence, where words weren't necessary, Ellen finally nodded, an emotional smile forming on her lips. I accept, Richard. It will be an honor to be your partner. This decision, beyond solidifying the restaurant's future, brought a new level of closeness between Richard and Ellen. Working side by side with renewed trust and respect, they discovered that what connected them went beyond work. The conversations that were once about business became filled with personal confidences, laughter, and a deepening bond that grew stronger each day. Over time, this bond transformed into something more. Richard and Ellen, after facing so many battles together, realized that what they felt for each other had grown into genuine love. It wasn't a hasty or impulsive decision, but the natural result of a relationship built on respect, unconditional support, and a partnership that extended beyond the boundaries of the restaurant. One evening, after a particularly successful day, Richard invited Ellen to dinner at the restaurant after closing. Sitting at one of the candlelit tables, they laughed and reminisced about the tough times they had overcome, until Richard, with a sparkle in his eyes, took Ellen's hand. Ellen, I've always believed that the best relationships are built during difficult times. And what we have is something special, something I don't want to lose. He paused, watching her reaction. Would you like to try something more than just a business partnership? Ellen looked into Richard's eyes, seeing the same sincerity and passion she had always admired. She smiled, feeling her heart beat faster. I'd love to, Richard. I think we've been heading in this direction for a while, and I'm ready to see where it takes us. In that moment, a new chapter began for Richard and Ellen. With their partnership strengthened, and now intertwined by a relationship that went beyond the professional, they were ready to face any challenge the future held. As for Rose, Richard made a decision that would forever change the future for her and Lincoln. One day, after another successful service, he asked to speak with Rose in the office. The familiar and welcoming environment was now filled with a sense of anticipation. Rose, Richard began with a warm smile, you have been a vital part of our team, and I want you to know how much I value everything you've done. Your cooking has brought new life to this place and won the hearts of all our customers. That's why I've decided it's time to invest even more in your talent. Rose looked at him, surprised and a bit confused. Invest in my talent? She asked, unable to hide her curiosity. Richard nodded, the decision already made in his heart. I want you to study culinary arts at one of the best schools in the field. I'll cover all the expenses. With your talent and proper training, you could become one of the best chefs in the country. Rose's eyes filled with tears, the impact of the offer overwhelming her. Richard, I don't know what to say. I never imagined something like this would be possible for me and Lincoln. You've already done so much for us. I... I don't know how to thank you. Richard smiled, feeling satisfied to be able to provide this opportunity for Rose. You deserve it, Rose. Everything you've done here is incredible, but I know you can go even further. And when you return, I hope you'll accept the role of head chef at the restaurant. Rose wiped her tears, still emotional. I accept, Richard. It's a dream I never thought I could achieve. I promise to do my best and make you proud. With Richard's financial and emotional support, Rose enrolled in one of the most prestigious culinary schools in the country. In the months that followed, she dedicated herself with renewed passion to her studies, 
absorbing every technique, every concept, with the same fervor that had guided her since the day she cooked with her mother. Time passed, and finally, the day of her graduation arrived. Richard and Lincoln were there in the front row, clapping with pride as Rose received her diploma. Her face lit up with a smile that expressed the fulfillment of a dream she had never dared to imagine. After her graduation, Rose returned to the restaurant, now equipped with new skills and a confidence that shone in her eyes. Richard, keeping his promise, formally promoted her to head chef. This is your place now, Rose, he said during the simple ceremony he organized to mark the occasion. You're not just part of the team, you're the heart of our kitchen. With her new position, Rose began earning a salary that provided the stability and comfort she and Lincoln had always deserved. Their lives changed significantly. Lincoln, seeing his mother's success, began to dream about his own future, inspired by the example of resilience and determination that Rose had given him. At the restaurant, Rose's presence as head chef brought a new wave of success. Her dishes, now refined with the techniques she had learned, continued to delight customers, and the restaurant became a culinary landmark in the city. Richard, observing all this, knew he had made the right choice in investing in Rose. Not only had she transformed her own life, but she had also helped elevate the restaurant to heights he had never imagined reaching. As he watched Rose in action in the kitchen, leading the team with grace and confidence, Richard felt a deep sense of satisfaction. The future that had seemed so uncertain not long ago was now filled with possibilities. With Rose at the helm of the kitchen and Ellen by his side, the restaurant was destined for even greater success. With the restaurant flourishing and life finally in balance, Richard decided it was time to celebrate everything they had achieved together. He organized a special gathering at his home, an intimate barbecue where every detail reflected the gratitude he felt. The sun shone brightly in the sky, and the air was filled with the inviting smell of food grilling on the barbecue. Richard and Ellen, side by side, prepared the barbecue with the same partnership that had guided all the important decisions up to that point. Rose and Lincoln arrived shortly after, bringing with them a dessert made with Rose's special touch. Lincoln, with his contagious smile, ran around the yard, the freedom and joy reflecting the new life his mother had managed to build for them. As the meat sizzled and the sound of laughter filled the air, Richard paused to take in the scene around him. Ellen, laughing at something Rose had said, looked more radiant than ever, and he felt a special warmth in his chest as he realized how much she meant to him. Rose, with an expression of contentment, chatted with Lincoln, who was excitedly talking about his plans for the future. Everything around him was a testament to how much they had overcome together. When they finally sat down to eat, Richard raised a glass, calling everyone's attention. Today, he began, his voice filled with emotion, is not just a day to celebrate the success of the restaurant or the achievements we've reached. It's a day to recognize how much we've transformed as individuals and as a family. He looked at Ellen, his eyes meeting hers with a warmth that spoke more than words. Ellen, you've been my rock, my partner every step of the way. I don't know where we'd be without your strength and vision. And now we're building something wonderful together. Turning to Rose and Lincoln, Richard continued, Rose, your courage and determination saved this restaurant and inspired all of us. Seeing you and Lincoln thrive is one of the greatest joys I've ever experienced. Lincoln, you have a bright future ahead of you, and I know your mother is the best example you could have. Rose smiled, her eyes shining with tears of happiness and replied, Richard, you've given us more than just shelter and a job. You've given us a new life, a second chance, and for that, we'll be forever grateful. Ellen also spoke, her voice gentle but full of firmness. We've all been through tough times, but together we found a way to move forward. What we've built here is more than just a successful restaurant. It's a family, and I'm grateful for each one of you. With that, they toasted, the sound of the clinking glasses echoing through the yard, a symbol of the unity that now defined them. Richard, Ellen Rose, and Lincoln ate and laughed, sharing stories and dreams for the future, feeling that the world was suddenly full of possibilities. As the sun began to set, Richard looked out at the horizon, feeling a deep sense of completeness. The journey had been arduous, filled with challenges and uncertainties, but what he had achieved alongside these people was far more than he had ever imagined. 
There, in that moment, surrounded by those who mattered most, Richard realized that true success lay in finding, through so many adversities, a real family. And with that, he knew that no matter what the future brought, they would face it all together, strengthened by love, friendship, and the certainty that they had become whole and happy. Want access to more stories like this? Click the link in the pinned comment below and find out how.